one is orange, pineapple, carrot, apple, beet, ginger, and lemon. Good morning, or shall I say, happy Monday. It is Labor Day, day eight of our raw vegan food challenge. And ah, I cleaned up the house. As you seen this morning, I really cleaned up my bedroom because it was looking a mess. And cleaned the bathroom, cleaned the living room in the kitchen a little bit but you know how it go in the kitchen like as soon as you clean it up it gets messy again um so it's already messy and then i took my braids out as you can see i'm about to um, put some product in it because me and my daughter are having a mom and daughter day i'm gonna take her to the mall take her to the mall baby and we're gonna do a little bit of shopping and hanging out the way my daughter got this brush look and it's got all kind of hair, she'll never clean nothing up. You know how kids do. Anyways, I was gonna show you how I get like a defined curl in my hair when I do wear it natural. I have been natural for, whew, I'm a saggy at least 12 13 years at least 10 plus years that i've been natural um but it's like i'm starting all over again because you know i had lost my hair to psoriasis in 2020 and so now it's starting to roll back fuller except for like my edges are still kind of thin but they were thin before i was losing my hair just from you know over the years doing tight hairstyles on your um head so I'm using the Wow Growth Light Oil Moisturizer. Um, who is this by? I don't know. This is just like an oldie but goodie that like when you go to the hair supply store, you just grab it. Um, it's by Wild Growth Company. They also have one that's in white. That one has a stronger scent to me that I don't like. And the oil is kind of thicker. So I like this one. Just making sure I get all up in that scalp. And then I like to section my hair off and work in sections to get like a defined curl. So I always start in the back. Clip the top up. Let's see. Okay, and so I love using the Main Choices Pearly Braid Out Gel or Glaze. It's for a braid out, but I use it to define my curls. And as you can see how much I love it, it's almost gone. Hopefully this is enough product to get my whole head, but it's really goopy and sticky. So you definitely need another product with this, like that oil I put in, or your hair will feel kind of gross throughout the day. But I just distribute it through my hair, like so. And then I'll take another Odie Bagood, I can't talk, another Odie Bagoody Dippity Doo Curls. I can't get it open because my hands is already wet. Okay. And then I put that on top of the mains choice. And then I take a denim brush, a little baby denim brush. And I just brush through it.
It was giving Jerry Curl. This <laughs> is what it was giving. Can you see that? No, when it dries, it's gonna shrink a little bit, you know, but I still like to kind of pull it out. And that's how I do that thing. And I'm gonna just keep going up until I completely saturate the hair with product and then brush it out. And then I try to put it in some kind of style. I don't know what kind of style is gonna go in today because my hair is not really cut in a style. It's just growing. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna try to do a part, if that's gonna look right. <laughs> or maybe I'll put like a, a headband on. Child, I don't know. But anyway. This is how I do it. Whew. Been cleaning, took down my hair, styled this. I think I like it now. I mean, it's presentable, right? I needed definitely some earrings in and I'll put some eyebrows on. Um, <laughs> Because at first, I was like, mm, mm this ain't it. And it's okay now, I think. But anyways, let me tell you what I did. I'm always doing some mess. So, you know I'm on this raw vegan challenge. Well, one day out of each month, I fast and do a juice fast. And I use this company called Squeezed here in Arizona. I don't know if they're in other states, but they're here in Arizona. Love them. We'll talk about that another time. But anyways, I forgot to cancel my subscription and lo and behold, it shows up at my door yesterday and I didn't prepped all this food and I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? So I was like, should I just go ahead and do my fast, my juice fast, or should I have one of these? Cause you get six um, juices or is it seven? No, you get five juices and one uh, non-dairy milk, a, a nut milk. And so I was like, should I just drink one every day of the week and then continue on with the rest of my food? Because I still want to, you know, share my content of what I'm eating in a day being raw vegan. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to just drink one every day. So this one is orange, pineapple, carrot, apple, beet, ginger, and lemon. And this is probably one of my favorite ones. So anyways, yes, I'm having this and uh, my hands is shaking because I waited too long to eat. So my body is like, feed me now. Okay, I'm about to feed you. So anyways, I'm about to drink this and um, I'll be back. So I'm ready to start my hydroponic system back up. I bought this a few months back. Um, it, it worked very well. I had lush amount of herbs, okay? But I stopped using it, one, for the gnats, and then two, I was like, oh, I should transition these outside and you know work on my garden more which i did um i think i showed it in a previous vlog or video where i have put a new garden bed out there and i already have one that's like full of herbs or whatever but i started to adventure with or experiment with vegetables and then that's when the pests came well rodents and i don't know specifically which one but i have rabbits ground squirrels or prairie dogs I don't know what they are but they dig tunnels in my uh, yard and always running around acting crazy and then mice so between those three I don't know who the culprit is but they were digging up my vegetables and eating my vegetables once they started to grow and so I just basically the backyard I just gave up I just let them have it and like I said I was transitioning things from my hydroponic system out there and they was just snatching it up so I got discouraged and I just quit everything 
and I want to get back into it because I want to have an abundance of vegetables, fruits, and herbs. You know, like I want to stop wasting my money at the grocery store, and especially you don't know what they're putting on this food nowadays. So I decided, okay, well, you got the gnat situation under control, so let's try this again. Um, oh, and also another thing, like i was doing so good with this hydroponic system the plants were getting so big that like this thing was almost about to topple over so my goal is okay do this have you a few little kitchen herbs and then let's expand and get a bigger hydroponic system and so i'm still trying to figure out whether i want to have an indoor hydroponic system or if i want to transition it outside um you know you have less disease and pest issues but with the rodents i still feel like they can jump from anywhere and jump on to the hydroponic system and grab what they want to grab so let me know what you think i'm still thinking about it i might just get um, a bigger hydroponic system i have my eye on one that is like a two tier it's about this big i think you can grow like up to 60 um vegetables like lettuce and things like that um on this thing but it's 500 dollars, and i'm just like mm, i don't know if i'm ready to make that kind of investment yet like it's in my cart all i gotta do is hit buy but yeah i'm just still trying to debate like am i ready to take on this like i was already ready to you know create a whole backyard garden over here on this side in my backyard but the pests have run me out and there are a lot of people here in arizona that are very successful with gardening and that's another thing the sun oh my gosh the sun kills so many plants out here and not just uh my veggies like i have like um what do you call those ornamental trees and bushes and stuff we have lost a lot of vegetation um a lot of trees and things like that out here and this summer has been the worst you know because global warming every everything is on fire right now like it's just hot like it's been in the teens here so anyways i decided let's give this another shot and so let me show you what i have so some of this is organic some of it's not because i just i'll be grabbing stuff and i'm new to gardening so i'm just like eh, let's just grab some stuff and see what you can grow first okay so here's my plan i have uh 10 slots that i can grow things in so i know that i definitely want to do cilantro because i love cilantro and i want to do like some baby like cherry tomatoes so those are going to be the star of this hydroponic system so we got where is the uh, tomatoes come on now some little um burpee organic sweetie cherry tomatoes and then my cilantro so we'll put that right here let me move this stuff okay let's build this right Hold on, I got a little plan and everything that I made. Okay, so my front row, this goes on top of here like this, and then you put the pods inside and the seeds inside of the pods. But I'll show you that in a minute because we're going to do this whole thing together. So my first row, I think we'll do the cherry tomatoes, the cilantro next to it, and then basil i love basil i have some outside that is doing very well did i not get basil i know you lying <gasps> oh no i got basil okay some basil right here i wanted to get a purple basil but i was like asheria don't get in here buying all this stuff and things don't grow just stick to you know the simple stuff and then build on from there because i have that personality where i just want to buy it all so i was like no calm down so we just got regular um basil and then uh parsley next to it okay and then as we swing around i want to do chives and i did get two kind of chives so i have the regular chives and the garlic chives i thought that would be pretty cool you know like 
chives that taste like garlic don't you think so i got those but i'm not sure if i'm gonna put them both in here or pick one over the other so i'm gonna just leave that like that and then in my back row i got spearmint now this you know i don't know because you know mint will take over stuff so i have to make sure i keep my eye on this but I wanted a little mint, you know, I like to put mint and stuff in my water. So I thought that would be cool and it's a good companion to all these others. Um, and then marigolds, you can do marigolds in a hydroponic system. So we got some marigolds right there. Also helps to deter pest. And nasterium, I think that's how you pronounce it. But I had this in my garden bed last year in this summer well not this summer this spring it was beautiful i love how vibrant red the flowers are and even the leaves are beautiful so i'm gonna throw some in here um i may potentially move it out and put it back outside once it gets cooler because nasterium is just a beautiful plant it, it has medicinal product uh it has medicinal properties and you can also eat it Okay, then coming around from the nasterium, I have thyme, and I do have some thyme outside already, but it never hurts to, you know, do it again. And then I have rosemary. I freaking love rosemary. This is just an old rosemary that I already had. Um, and then what I have left is lemon basil, dill, and oregano and i have tons of oregano outside so i probably won't plant any oregano in here but i'm like do i want to switch any of these up um i probably won't do the lemon basil it's really it tastes just like lemons like it's good in your water and cooking with it like if you want to do like a lemon dish uh but i've had it before so i want to try something new so maybe should I put dill in here? Let's switch out the thyme for the dill. Let's do that because I have thyme outside. So, okay, this is going to be our lineup. And I don't know if I'm doing garlic or regular chives. What you think? Oh, this is a tough one. Okay, let's just go with regular chives. We can always add on, right? Okay. So first thing we need to do is I'm actually, I had this on my kitchen counter last time, but I'm going to move it into my office just because I don't want the gnat problem. And I noticed in the house, uh, because we have this sliding glass door and it has like the doggy door out there, that's where the gnats usually come in from because that's the door that we frequent a lot going in and out. And then, you know, oh, she is always going in and out. That's how the gnats get in here. So I figure if I put it far away from in this common living space, then I won't have such a problem. So we'll see. And plus, like, I don't want to put nothing else on these shelves. Like, not these shelves, excuse me, this counter, because I got enough stuff and the clutter right now is making my nerves bad. So what we need is we need our liquid fertilizer or liquid food and then water. And then we have the pump that goes in here like this. And we have our pod holders. And then here are our grow sponge pods, I guess is what I would call them. So, they look like this they're dry right now so i'm gonna put them in a bowl and get them wet so they can expand oh lord i hope i have enough how don't i have enough i thought this was a new thing two four six seven oh my gosh i only have seven okay so we might not get to do everything that we want Okay, we gotta make it do what it do. Okay, so I got some distilled water over here that I'm gonna add to these sponges just to get them to expand a little bit. And while that's doing that, I'm wondering if I should do this in my office, like pour the water and everything in there so I don't have to lug it in there. But now I'm like, I already got it set up right here. We're just gonna do it right here and then I'll just lug it. What's the fun in making it easy? Let's just make it complicated. Okay, so you get your little water pump that goes right here. And then let's attach it to this cord. And then we also have a grow light up here. 
and all this attaches together and then you just plug it in right here and then this has a little closure casing that you snap on here just so the water pump doesn't you know float away the pump and motor and then from there you take the top part and we'll put our tray or our little i don't know what you call this the little water channel thing this is how the water gets to each pot so it attaches to this little hole right here shoots up here and then it comes out these little areas if you can see and so has a little cutout oh their cutout is right there so let's line this up make sure it fits on the pump it does and then we'll feed this through the little cutout that it has and boom there we go Swing this around right here. All right, and then we'll put in our little pod holders. Hold on, I got to unsnap this bra. This is one of the t-shirt bras that you can make to like a razor back, depending on the shirt you have on, like me. But isn't it my back hurt? Like my upper neck. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> I know you like. I did not need to know that. Well, I told you, okay? Look, like I'm missing. Okay, I'm missing some stuff. What the heck, and bobs? Okay, so I'm missing a holder right here. And then you have this little cap that you put on here. Um, this is where you fill the water at. And then, you know, in between time, in the meantime, this is where you would, um, you know, do a water check and refill it. Oh, I put this on backwards. I'm supposed to have it facing this way so you can see the water. So hold on, let me fix this. Ciao! No wonder. No wonder. The uh, cord wasn't fitting the way I knew it should. There we go. Now, let's put it back in there. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I think you can do about, what is that, 2.5 liters. So usually I get it to the max so it can touch the sponges and so the water will always be in contact with the sponge and the seed so it can germinate faster. And then I forgot to say, these are just hoods, like it gives like that greenhouse effect so you can help germinate them. So we are gonna get our water and start pouring it in and then I need my liquid nutrients. I have some fish fertilizer that I kinda wanna try on this, but fish fertilizer has a lot of nitrogen in it. I thought that would be good for the tomatoes, but I don't know about the herbs, so I might and I might not do that. Okay, so I went ahead and decided to use my fish fertilizer it's the alaska fertilizer and the reason why i decided to use this is because my regular plant fertilizer and food for this thing um, i barely have any so i'm just going to use this but i won't do this all the time so i'll probably do this like every other water change because like i said this is high in nitrogen but just to get it started, I'm gonna go ahead. Hopefully I don't jack nothing up. Probably the gardeners that watch this be like, oh my God, you're doing it wrong. We gonna find out. Okay, I think that's enough. Oh my God, it smells horrible. <laughs> Where is the lid? Oh, here we go. I'm gonna put the cap back on this and I will probably pour this in my garden outside. Chow, it's stinking. Okay, so we got our grow sponges wet and ready. Oh my God, it smells so bad in here. I don't know if I can take it. 
back on this and then these i'm gonna just keep covered all of them will be covered but i don't want anything like trying to get in here or the water evaporating so all right let's start putting our little seeds in there say our first row tomatoes so i'm probably put about what two or three in here just to make sure we you know get some growth from one There's our tomatis. My grandmother used to have a garden and I used to be out there with her help and I'm like, dang, how come I can't recall any of the stuff that she taught me? Like I remember a little bit but baby, I'm out here struggling. And the thing about it is when I lived in Kansas, my hometown, I had no issues growing stuff. Like that ground was so fertile and you had to worry about this beaming, strong sun. Here, it's just been a struggle for me, but there are a lot of people that have thriving gardens. Okay, next we're putting in our cilantro. Got three in here and it has like a little hole that you just drop it down in see right there just drop it in there and then our basil oh no my camera's overheating I'm gonna do as much as I can until it cut off grab just about three little basil seeds and put it down in that hole and next we have parsley another juice because I love juice and I love just pure watermelon juice this is the juices that I batched on Sunday oh my gosh my fingers still stink it's like it's like it's in my nose hairs or something and I've washed my hands twice I don't know if I can use that or I'm gonna have to put gloves on but Mm. Okay, maybe that did it. Drop my dang paper towel. Okay, so I did another round of kombucha, remember, last week, and I'm on my second fermentation of my second round. Um, and I got a little experimentational, okay? That's not a word, but I said it. So, I found this bottle and I got another one. Oh, it's in the fridge. 
I got this from Marshalls and it was $3.99. So if you're looking for bottles for your kombucha, go to Marshalls. They had a smaller size that was probably about that high, but it didn't like yield enough. It didn't hold enough for me. So I was like, no, I'll just get the big bottle. Um, I was going to order a whole big batch on Amazon, which I did. And then I seen these at Marshalls and I canceled my order. I was like, I can get it right here, right now. So anyways, this one has just straight watermelon juice in it when i was batching this watermelon now this one has cherries watermelon and basil look how pretty it is and i love the color and then this one baby this one has pineapple orange watermelon and then the cherries again and i think they're about ready um when did i do this sunday it's monday so just a day like it's so warm in here in arizona stuff is really taking off i'm scared hold on I was not expecting that. My last batch was not this powerful. It must be the fruit. This fruit right here must be. Ciao. One more time. Oh. Look at that. She is ready. Do you hear? Okay, we're gonna put her in the fridge because you don't need to sit out no more. You you did what you needed to do. Now I gotta pick this up, wipe this up. Okay, let's 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 see how this one is doing. I'm scared. I see it's already fizzing. This one can't be as strong as that one. No, it's not. So this one, it might be, it's not suctioning enough. I need to get some more of those bottles because that right there, that's what I'm looking for. It's still fizzy. It's still carbonating, but it's not going to be as um, carbonated as this one. Yeah, I'm going to have to switch these out to these now. I see a little bit of fizz, but not really. Okay. So anyways, I just wanted to give you an update on that. This is so exciting. I love tinkering around the house with crap. So I'm going to go get me a few more of those bottles so I can pour these in that. And I'll just keep using these. I've been using these for my uh, non-dairy milk. I like to make nut milks. And I was using that for these. Or like when I juice and I just fill this whole thing up so I can drink it, you know, throughout the day. But uh, yeah, we got kombucha again. And guess what? I got a whole nother batch brewing. A whole nother batch. Let me show you. Okay. Plus, I need to check on her anyways to see, you know, how she's doing. So this is our third batch. You can tell I'm obsessed with kombucha, right? Hold on. Let me wipe this off because it's going to drive me crazy if I don't wipe that. <laughs> I want to drink some. Shall we drink some just to see what it tastes like? Okay, hold on. Let me wash my hands again. Oh, my rubber band must have popped. looking all right i don't see any mold got this little spot right here but that's the yeast remember your mold is going to be fuzzy and dry looking this is very much gooey and i brewed so much kombucha in my day i kind of know what i'm looking for and then i see like some lines starting to form but that's like underneath the scoby if you can see oh you probably can't see yeah so so far she's doing good let's give her a try still fizzing 
gonna get a strainer. I need to find me like a smaller strainer. I was gonna make sure none of that fruit. This is like soda. This is crazy. This was a good, a good buy. Okay. This is better than the first batch. Mm-hmm. I'm so proud of myself. That is really good. Just watermelon juice. That's all I put in here. Okay. I'm going to rinse this off so it's not sticky. Put it in the fridge. And then I got a little bit of work to do. And I want to check in on my Facebook group. See how the girls are doing. Um, and then we'll get to lunch. Okay. So let me just show you some of the meals that the ladies are making in our group today. So... Shayla has a Mediterranean salad and watermelon. And she's drinking kombucha. And then Miss Natalie is having her chia pudding and looks like honeydew. And uh, Shakari is just sharing a raw vegan protein that they can use if they want to increase their protein. Um, this is me talking about my whole debacle with getting the uh, juices delivered. I'm like, what am I going to do? Uh, oh, I hope I'm saying the name right. Yoshi Michelle, her smoothie. Okay. No, yeah, it looks really cute together. I like. Shikari sharing her juice and journaling this morning. Oh, and I made uh, cashew milk last night so i'll show that to you i actually used that for my chia pudding oh and here are some lettuce wraps that natalie made yesterday with the walnut taco flavored meat i'm so proud of them they are really killing it Let me try this real quick. That's pretty darn tasty. Look at this. Shut up! I've been seeing this little veggie chopper thing all over from Sheen to Timu to the TikTok shop. And I was like, I I'm not gonna be that girl. I'm not gonna be influenced. I promise I'm not. And yeah, I was influenced. But listen, they didn't get me. I got them. So I seen this on the TikTok shop and they wanted like 20 bones for it. Look how good it cuts though. Um, and I was like, mm, I'm a pass. And so I went on Timu and looked, and it was a just a taint of a bit cheaper, but I was like, you don't need it. Chop your vegetables like normal. Get an old, good old knife, and you'll be fine. Then I went to Facebook, because that's where the Facebook group is for a 30-day challenge, and you know how they track you now, right? Well, the tracking worked out for my benefit. I had seen an advertisement from Timu with the same vegetable chopper. It was $1.87. And I was like, you better not be playing with me if I click on this. I clicked on it. It was actually $1.87. And guess what? I ordered it. And I got this with all these pieces right here. $1.87. So it comes with like a strainer basket. 
it comes with the container to catch the vegetables um, the lid or the cover that you can uh, change out the different attachments so it has like a chopper a small chopper piece I don't know what these things is called so I'm gonna be making up the name so don't come for me if I don't say I'm right a big chopper thing and then this is the piece that goes on the top part of this so you'll place this like this and then the chopper uh the blade in here so this is what you use to press down like on your onions or tomatoes or whatever you want to use to make this type of chopping shape then you have smaller ones that do like julienne and like a ruffle cut ruffle cut i don't know the instructions tell you what each of them do but i ain't got time for that and then they have this one, which I thought it was really neat because at first I was like, what do I need this for? I don't want it. And then I was reading the instructions. You can grate your ginger and your garlic with this. And I was like, let's see how good it works. It works so good. Like I usually buy jarred uh, garlic and ginger because I just don't have time to be cutting. But now I'm like, okay, I might not need no more jars. All I gotta do is rub this across this thing and you just put it right here like how this one is. And you got you some grated ginger and garlic so this was definitely a great buy and i got it for a dollar 87 so my best bet to you is look it up on timu and then go to facebook or some social media i'm sure instagram tracks you from that or timu has you tracked from those social media accounts and then wait for them to come up with a sale ad advertisement and you in there like swimwear oh and then you got this piece right here so like if you can't hold this steady you can stick the um what i'm trying to say the uh the not a blade the pointy things in the vegetable to hold it and grip it and then you can go like this so it's you know easier um they have one other thing to, oh yeah 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 then you can separate your yolks with this i'll probably never use this because i don't eat eggs anymore but i might use it for my family they eat eggs so i just thought this was a really good buy and using it right now heck yeah it is look at that look, 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 look. okay so i'm really not hungry but I'm like, let me eat something because I say I'm not hungry and by the time it get evening time and I ain't ate nothing, I'm gonna be mad that I didn't prep anything to eat. So we are about to make pad thai zoodles, but I'm gonna put them in a jar so I can have them throughout the days. Okay. 